Welcome to Dig Deep, the mining podcast. In this podcast, we go deep into mining news, hot topics, and live interviews with mining professionals and leading figures in the mining industry. Introducing your host, Rob Tyson, founder and director of Mining International and Mining International Executive, a leading global mining recruitment and headhunting agency. Hi, mining community. Welcome back to another episode of the Dig Deep, the mining podcast. And today's guest is Charlie King, who's CEO of Tribe Tech, who are a disruptive developer, manufacturer of autonomous mining equipment established in 2019 in Western Australia um, and has since established headquarters and manufacturing facility in Northern Ireland. Um, Charlie's a highly experienced manager with over 15 years of commercial and operational experience in mineral exploration, working with three of the biggest drilling companies in Western Australia. Um, and as, as now the CEO of Tribe Tech, he's going to explain a little bit about what the company have achieved in a short space of time um, and what their automated equipment can benefit mining companies um, in their exploration activities. Charlie, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing? Yeah, very well, thanks. Yourself? Yeah, good, thanks. Appreciate you uh, taking the time to come onto this podcast. Uh, we have met in person. We were just saying off air before we started recording, we have met each other probably a few years ago at one of the big conferences. So uh, for those that don't know you, that listen to this podcast, I just wanted you to just tell us a little bit about your, about your career, about your background. Obviously, I mentioned that you've been in the, the drilling industry for, for some time now. Just wonder if you can walk us through your, your career. Yeah, so moved moved out to Australia back in 2011, um, and for my sins, ended up on a on a drill rig in the in the middle of the desert. It was big big shock for a Northern Irishman to be in plus 50 degrees in the Pilbara. Um, but yeah, no, started out um, on on the tools as a, a labourer on a drill rig. Um, worked worked my way up, and during the downturn of 2012 um, moved moved into the office um, doing kind of business development and commercial and leveraging my experience that I'd had in other sectors before I got into the drilling industry and developed a bit of a niche for turning around drilling companies, looking at systems, processes, people, commercial operations, um, looking for niches to, to help help get advantages so that we could secure contracts, deliver better better operations, safer and more profitably. And yeah, did that successfully over three, three of the largest uh, drilling contractors in WA. And yeah, it was in, in the last company that I was running that, um, you know, we were having uh, lots, of, lots of issues with people, processes, equipment. And I, I'd seen mining moving towards automation and autonomous drill and blast rigs, trains, haulage. And I thought I'd be able to go and buy a fleet of a autonomous drill rigs. And when I went around the major OEMs and uh, automation specialists, nobody actually had a solution that removed the people from the machine. Um, and although there was some, you know, people using the word autonomous or automation, you still had three to five operators on the machine. And my, my desire was to have a machine with no people on it. And lots of people would tell me why you couldn't do it or why it was impossible. And being a bit of a lateral thinker, I came up with a way to build the machine around the automation and then went and headhunted the smartest uh, engineers I've met on that process. And uh, yeah, five, nearly five years later, here we are with our, our first drill rig uh, about to roll out the factory. Right. I just wanted to just tell us a little bit about Tribe Tech. Um, as you mentioned, you started uh, five years ago. Um, I just wanted to just run through a little bit of the process from starting that organization to sort of now. Yeah, you know, boot, bootstrapped it from the beginning. Um, so self self-funded the company myself. Um, and, you know, we, we kind of had some early concepts, ideas, and then refined those concepts and ideas to a point where um, we, we pitched the concept to Mark McKay from McKay Drilling and uh, got their endorsement and went into commercials with them to purchase four of our machines. Um, once we signed that contract with them, 
and had a forward order book, um, you know, that allowed us to go from pure R&D into, into kind of production and design for manufacture. Um, and since then, we've done kind of multiple funding rounds um, to grow the company. And uh, yeah, we, uh, yeah, when was that? Uh, 2022, uh, we secured a contract with Anglo-American to purchase one of our machines directly for themselves to become an owner operator. And at the same time had Cordovan, uh, a local private equity company, come on board to, to support us with further cash injection. But as part of that process, they wanted to see us list. Um, so then we went down the process of doing an IPO, which was um, pretty, pretty all consuming last year on top of everything else. Um, but we IPO'd on the AIM market last year. I think we we're one of one of eleven companies that managed an IPO last year. So, um, yeah, really, really big achievement for the team. And uh, since then, you know, scaling, scaling production operations, and you know, lo lots of teething problems, challenges that we've worked through to get to a point where. You know, our first uh, autonomous sampling system, a uh, commercial model has been deployed out for Anglo-American in South Africa. And our first drill rig is getting ready to put on a boat to Western Australia next month. Um, what, what is smart mining? And I suppose what inspired you, inspired you to sort of pioneer to this new technology? You mentioned you wanted to build something where it didn't involve any people um, using the drill rigs, what what was the reason behind that? Yeah, so to to start with, smart smart mining, you know, is is about using using data to make better decisions. Uh, to you know, if you think about um, the journey from an exploration project that they define the resource through to a producing mine, that journey can be 10, 10 years, can be longer in some cases. And, you know, the more data, accurate data that the miners can get faster, they can help make better decisions on where to mine, how to mine, what optimal grades, what blends they need. So um, smart mining is really about enabling the mining houses to make better decisions faster. And we see our technology as helping enable a lot of that and the, the kind of real digital transition and trends that are happening within the sector. Um, drilling, you know, it's it's drilling a hole in the ground, getting sample, sending that off for an assay. But there's a, there's a huge amount of data that our machine's collecting, uh, particularly our machine as it's, we, we need all the sensors for the automation. We can produce far more data and make that data usable to the miners to help them make better decisions on their future future planning, and uh, yeah, my your second question. So why and why why have we done this? I think there was you know a real desire for change within the industry, and you know trying to a, a lot of our competitors are trying to retrofit automation to their existing uh, products, and we see that as being limited. Uh, or how far you can get to. So what we've done is a ground up redesign, designing the machine around the automation. And, you know, it's been a, a colossal undertaking um, with somewhere between 150,000 development hours and probably getting closer to 200,000 development hours to get to where we are. So the barrier to entry for people to achieve that is is significant. And uh, yeah, we've we've taken it on and and managed to power through and get to the other side, which is a, a, an amazing achievement. How does your autonomous rigs, uh, I suppose, compare to traditional uh, exploration rigs? Um, and how is your technology different to what I suppose is already in the marketplace? Yeah, well, without giving away too much too much of the secret sauce, um, manned rigs have about three to five operators on the machine during drilling um, that, you know, I've, I've, I've done that job. It is dangerous. It is dusty. Uh, you're working big shifts in uh, around volatile equipment. And, you know, I believe the, the only way to make these machines safe is to remove people from harm's way. 
Um, now, we, with our machine, we do that during, during operations, but obviously we still need people for servicing, maintenance, cleaning, et cetera. So, you know, getting the people out of the line of fire and away from the machine is a complete step change. And for us, what that does, um, and this was a bit of a surprise to me, I thought the, the return on investment for purchases of our equipment would be the saving in costs of, of personnel. But the way our, or the way we, we believe our IP functions is actually about getting more bit on bottom of whole time drilling during a shift. And our, our IP allows uh, multiple things to be happening at the same time, faster cycle times, um, you know, with removing the people from the process and how our IP operates. So we think we'll be able to significantly improve uh, the production rates of drills by just getting more time per shift drilling. A drill rig typically only has 25 to 30 percent bid on bottom a whole time during a shift, and the rest of the shift is doing supporting activities. We think we can we can turn that around and significantly improve that, which uh, makes it an a, attractive proposition for people to take over the technology and bring it in house not only for the, the safety, but also the productivity and hopefully quality of sample improvements as well. And is there other com companies doing something similar in this space? And if so, how are you different from your competitors? Yeah, look, I, I, I can't really talk to talk to my competitors, but we, we do have a 100% success rate at Tender. Um, and the people we compete against are large household name multi-billion dollar companies so um somebody must like what we're doing um otherwise we wouldn't have had the success we've had today um you recently completed your first uh autonomous drill rig um a major obviously milestone for for yourself and for the company one thing just tell us a little bit more about that yeah, sure. So, I, I mean, although the concept came out of my head, you know, really credit credit to the team here who have um, pushed, worked hard tirelessly through weekends to get get this thing from a vision through to an actual machine. Not only that that works, but also we can replicate and scale from a production point of view. Um, so, you know, a huge, huge undertaking. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I didn't think it was going to take this long or be this hard, but um, we, we, we've got to the other side of the hill, which is fantastic. But yeah, I, I mean, massive, massive achievement. And like anything, you know, um, it, it's hard enough developing technology, but also setting up a manufacturing facility, systems, processes, people. What we've had the luxury of is not having legacy systems that we're tied to. So we we you know we haven't always achieved it, but our attitudes being put things in right how we want it from the start. So even things like ISO accreditation, we did that very early in our in our journey as a company and trying to set up all the systems processes so that we can scale as we get more and more clients on board. Um, as you mentioned, your your first rig is uh, just being shipped at the moment. Um, what commercial pipeline have you got currently? Um, what's in front of you at the moment? Yeah, so, I mean, obviously we've got our, our signed contracts with Anglo-American and Major Drilling, which is fantastic, you know, to get two, two of the biggest players in our sector in the world as our first two clients. Re really shows the pull from the market. Um, when when we went out to IPO, we had a, a sales pipeline or potential pipeline of a further 40 machines. That's since increased to 54 machines. So we're seeing a lot of build up in demand for our equipment, a lot of inbound inquiries from multi-billion dollar blue chip organizations. Um, and a lot of people are waiting to see that first machine actually drilling in Australia. So we think that'll be a, a big inflection point for the business. And um, yeah, very, very exciting. Um, what does the, the future hold uh, for the company um, and obviously create within the industry? Um, and I suppose how soon do, you, do we expect to see significant change within the sector uh, with obviously your autonomous rigs? 
Yeah, um, our, our tagline is automating the toughest mm-hmm. tasks. Um, we we want to continue to find areas where the sector and the big players maybe maybe have neglected a niche. Maybe it's too small a market segment for them to take on, or they view the the challenge the challenge is too big. And we are seeing pull and demand from our our current and, and new customers and a desire for change. So we, we we love solving big problems and that's what we want to continue to do um, as a business. But, you know, really near term, I mean, we've just finished uh, probably the biggest R&D project in our sector ever. So, you know, we now want to focus on a systems quality program, pro, uh, uh, sorry, systems quality and, and performance and, you know, get get to being a, a self-generating profitable business, EBITDA positive as soon as we can. So, re, you know, we, we're going to slow down in the short term on big R&D um, unless um, there's a massive commercial reason to take it on, but really focus on, on commercializing um, our, our existing products that we've invested so much in. Uh, before we start growing again. And lastly, what is the outlook for the the sort of next 12 months? And is there any significant milestones uh, we expect to see from yourselves? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, first, as we announced on the market, our first sampling system uh, got shipped out to Anglo-American in South Africa. Uh, That'll be on site operating shortly. We'll be getting data back from that as well as our, our first drill rig leaving our production facility next month, uh, arriving in Australia or in September, and then, you know, getting into the field and operating, as well as, you know, ho- hopefully some good news on uh, some of our order pipeline as well. Charlie, really appreciate your time uh, sharing your story and this uh, sort of, a cred- I suppose, incredible achievement that you, I suppose, started five years ago as a concept and and now it's come to fruition and now you have a product it'd be good for you to come onto the podcast in say 12 months time um and see see where you are see where you are uh sort of then um and how many machines that you've actually got out then yeah excellent no full full credit to our team you know they've worked absolutely tirelessly to get us get us where we are and um yeah show some support and jump on and uh Follow follow the stock, T-R-Y-B on the A. Yeah. Charlie, really appreciate your time. If our audience wants to obviously uh, inquire about your autonomous drill rigs or if they want to follow you on social media, I imagine you, you'll probably have, you'll be on certain social media channels showing how, how it all works. Um, how can our audience get in contact with you and, and follow you on socials? Yeah, so I'm I'm a bit of a dinosaur. I've got a, a LinkedIn and that's about it. But uh, Tribe has a, its own LinkedIn page. Um, we've just uh, launched Investor Hub on our website where if you register there, uh, we can have Q&A. There'll be videos of um, announcements, et cetera, as well. And uh, yeah, don't hesitate to get in, in touch directly as well. Yeah, great. Well, all the best for the the remainder of the year, and let's have a chat next year, and then you can give us an update on uh, on how how you're progressing. Excellent. You keep well, Rob. Chat soon. Yeah. Thank you, Charlie. Bye. Hope you en- hope you enjoyed that episode. Um, please share this uh, amongst our mining community now, anywhere around the world, um, especially to obviously exploration companies, um, as obviously as well as the 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 bigger major companies, um, because obviously this is groundbreaking in what Charlie um, and Tribe Tech are doing. So appreciate your continued support. support. Please keep sharing these episodes far and wide. And until next time, happy mining. Thank you for listening. Remember to reach out to Rob via the show notes and be sure to subscribe and leave a review. Until next time, happy mining, helping each other to improve the mining industry.